throw myself on mute here. This okay, so you said we're ready? Okay, I'm on. Okay, it's 7 p.m. I'm going to call to order the regular meeting of council Tuesday, April 5th, 2022 at 7 p.m. We'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Indigenous peoples of the Treaty 7 region and Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our community. Okay, any additions to the agenda? If not, can I get a motion to accept the agenda as presented? I'll make the motion. All in favor? Thank you. Aye. Items 5.1. Uh, March 15th, 2022, regular council meeting. Everybody, if everybody got a chance to read those and review them, can I get a motion to accept? I'll make the motion to accept. All in favor? Uh, aye. Can you hear okay, Justin? I can hear perfectly, uh, Mayor Harris. Okay. All right, item six, subdi subdivision. Uh, 6.1 application 2022-627-000-S1 subdivision of lot one, block one, plan 8210733. Uh, 732 hectares into two bare land condominium units. So I'd like to introduce, uh, actually, Meryl, do you want to introduce Sarah? Sure, I certainly can. So Sarah Nielsen is joining us to report on this application. Sarah Nielsen is with <clears throat> Urban Systems. Take it away, Sarah. Perfect, thank you so much, Meryl. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Thank you so much for having us. Um, just bear with me, I'm going to pull up uh, the file. Apologies, just having some technical difficulties. Welcome, Sarah. I hope you're ready for all the hard questions. Definitely prepared. And uh, I, while I'm pulling this up, uh, I, I'll introduce my colleague, Meredith, um, who is uh, our legal survey expert. Um, so you may direct any and all hard questions to her. <laughs> oh, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, everyone. Um, and can everybody see uh, the council report? Yeah, it looks like it's up on the screen. You can go okay. ahead and any time. Thank you. Um, so this application is to subdivide an industrial lot at 629 McCool Street. It's in the southern portion of the town. The site is accessible um, from both Western Drive, uh, right along here, and McCool Street, which runs north-south. Um, at present, both accesses are currently used by, um, by the current tenant. Right now, the site contains a warehouse, um, which houses two separate uses, uses on either side of the warehouse. And the site also has associated parking areas uh, with accesses and utilities as well. The lot is currently zoned as medium industrial district, so the I-2 district. Um, and the surrounding lots to the north, south, uh, and west are also I-2. And then to the east, directly to the east, is uh, Highway 2A. So this application proposes a bare land condominium subdivision, which is simply a different type of subdivision that allows for servicing of one unit across an adjacent unit. 
So we wanted to provide council with a little bit more information um, given the, the servicing challenges on this lot. So any servicing on the units within a bare land condo are private services. They are not owned or maintained by the town at all. Servicing across a fee simple lot, um, which is what we would typically see in a subdivision, um, but servicing for water or wastewater is not allowed across those lots due to regulations in the Canadian plumbing standards. Um, they require each lot to have its own servicing connection to municipal services. There is no servicing in Western Drive at this time. So the applicant could not connect the second lot to its own servicing without crossing um, the, the other lot. So the, uh, the Eastern lot could not connect uh, to servicing at this time unless they went across the Western lot. Um, and for the applicant, it would have been cost prohibitive to bring the servicing into Western Drive for this one uh, subdivision parcel. So that's the reason that they, um, they chose to pursue a bare land condo subdivision. Um, ultimately, this kind of subdivision follows the same process as a fee simple subdivision, um, but what it does is produce a shared ownership structure. Um, and if there are any questions on that, Meredith is, uh, is happy to answer that. She's uh, much more well-versed in the details of uh, that type of subdivision. Actually, Sarah, if you could stop there and if Meredith can just explain a little more about that, I think council would appreciate it. Certainly. Yeah. Take it away, Meredith. Sure. Absolutely. So um, when you register a bare line condominium, um, looking at it on land, you would, it looks just like fee simple lots. It's not a building condominium like you would typically think when you think of a condominium. Um, it's honestly just an ownership structure. So what it does is it creates um, a condominium parcel that is separated into separate owner units, which are owned individually. So just like Sarah's got up on the screen here. Um, and that, so the town really would only service up to the, the property boundary of that condominium unit. So the blue line that is in here, everything within that is private servicing. But as you can see, it's, Simply, it looks just like two fee simple lots. It's just a different ownership. So they would share um, things like maintenance, condo fees. They have equal voting rights in how, how the units are maintained. Um, so it's a little bit more of a private ownership, but it is it looks and follows the same process as a subdivision. Thank you. Any questions um, or would you guys like um, Sarah to continue? Looks good. Continue on, Sarah. Thank you. Perfect. Not a problem. Um, so because it's so similar to the fee simple subdivision, um, they follow the same process. The application what is, is supposed to and was treated the same way. Uh, we reviewed it against the requirements of the land use bylaw and more specifically that medium industrial district, the I-2 district. Uh, and it meets all of the regulations and standards um, in that uh, in that section of the, the bylaw and in general as well. Uh, the application was circulated to the appropriate agencies and I'll just scroll back up. Uh, so we've listed all of the circulation comments and concerns here. Um, it, was, it was circulated to the agencies, town departments and all adjacent landowners. Um, five agencies responded with no objections, but Fortis did note that they may require an easement. Um, this was actually based on the fact that the, um, the applicant submitted the wrong title. Um, and then we accidentally circulated it with the, the wrong title as well. So ultimately um, it looks like Fortis may not require that, that same easement since it's already existing. Um, so we just confirmed with Fortis to say um, that we would like them to confirm with certainty um, through the subdivision approval process that they don't require any easements. And that actually just falls under one of the typical subdivision conditions um, that we always put in, which is just to assure that uh, the applicant is coordinating with all of the necessary agencies to make sure that all easements and right-of-ways that are required are on that, uh, on that subdivision going in. Uh, so if anyone is curious, that is uh, condition of approval number three, uh, which is just a blanket uh, condition requiring 
all the easements uh, and right of ways to be registered for agencies. Uh, and that will, the, this plan will come back to the town uh, for endorsement. So there is another step of verification uh, where we can make certain that um, agencies just like Fortis or anyone else um, has had all of the, all of their requirements met through this process. And then none of the adjacent landowners responded uh, to this circulation. So we have no comments from them at this time. And that actually concludes our, uh, our presentation. So if, if anyone has any questions, we're certainly available to answer uh, whatever council is curious about. Okay, uh, I'll open up questions uh, for council. Remember, Sarah's not answering the hard questions. Meredith is. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Harris. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Any questions? To the chair. Councillor Knight. Uh, even though, just, and I think you touched on this a bit, Meredith, when it talks about a bare land condominium unit, that can still be an existing, like this, this subdivision is based on that same building maintaining the same structure status, right? Yes, the building is not changing at all. I understand that there is actually already a wall that divides the warehouse into two separate parcels. And so this property line does coincide with that wall. Um, they, they just want to split ownership of the warehouse. Okay, last question. Are there any of these currently in town we've done this before already? I'm just curious for my own information, the town's information. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can say from my experience, I haven't, we haven't uh, dealt with this on an industrial lot. Meryl, you might have a better sense if there are, um, this is sometimes more common with, uh, developments like townhomes, and there may be a few residential developments that, that have used a bare land condo. Yeah, we'll have uh, Meryl answer that. Thank you, Mayor Harris. So through the chair, uh, we have seen condominium applications for apartment buildings, but nothing in the industrial district. So this is our first. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? I'm, I'm just curious, and maybe this is more of a Merrill question, but um, there's no services down there currently. Um, what happens when we do get services down there? Um, would they have to tie into town services at that point? And would they have to um, contribute to those services as they're being built? From my understanding, they once they have this approval for a bare land condominium, it can remain so unless they, um, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, unless they wanna change that status and get out of the condominium, the bare land condominium situation, then they would have to find a way to tie into services, correct? Yeah, you're, you're right on track, Meryl, um, that, so say down the line, um, services come into Western Drive, um, as soon as the applicant desires to make, and it, it may not be the same applicant, it may change ownership um, over the course of that time. But as soon as anyone applies to make changes or um, what we would call improvements uh, to that lot, they would be, they may be required if the town so chooses to tie in uh, to that servicing. And that would be at their own expense. Perfect. Thank you. All right, if there are no further questions, um, there is a recommendation by Urban Systems and uh, would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay, Councillor Knight, can you read it out please? Okay. Uh, the recommendation is on page three. Under recommendation and conditions. Page three. Yeah, I'm on page three. I'm at the... Here, I'll read it out and you Sorry. can make the motion. Thank you. Um, um, the recommendation is that council approve the subdivision, subdivision of 1031 Western Drive subject to the conditions outlined here and after. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Oh, hang on one second. Mayor Harris, if I may make one correction, I believe the wrong address was provided in the um, approval. Okay. Uh, in, rather than saying 1031 Western Drive, I believe it should be 629 McCool Street. 
629 McCool Street? Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Are you okay with that amendment? 629. 62, yeah, 629 McCool Street. Thank you. Okay, uh, so um, same motion, 629 McCool Street. All in favor? Motion carried. Aye. Thanks, Meredith. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Okay, new business, Crossfield Recreation Board 2022 spring funding. You're the chair. I need to remove myself due to conflict of interest for this one. Um, I'm just uh, curious if we can um, go through all the applicants except for the rodeo and baseball. Oh, yeah, oh, that's or softball. Um, go through those ones and then like, yeah. do we remove? Does Joe go out and then we talk about the rodeo and then um, she comes back and then we send Councillor Knight out? Would that be okay? Okay, let's do that. So let's deal with the ones that don't have anything to do with softball and, and rodeo or baseball and rodeo, and then we'll go from there. Okay. All right, good evening, Mayor and Town Council. Um, I'm here presenting on behalf of ARIS for the Crossfield Recreation Board uh, funding. On March 28th, the board met to review 2022 spring funding grant applications from various community groups. Uh, attached to the report is the spreadsheet of recommended motions made by the board. Um, a total of $26,348.16 is um, being recommended for uh, funding. <clears throat> to um, the, these, uh, the following groups. So Crossfield Minor Baseball at $4,500 to upgrade equipment to league standards and replace older and damaged equipment. Uh, for Collicut Siding Dream Junior Golf Academy for $4,000 to replace and purchase the golf balls for the Junior Academy. Um, to the Crossfield Roadie Society for a capital um, application in the amount of $8,848.16 to make additional facility upgrades to the rodeo grounds, uh, including electrical improvements, siding re replacement, and paint. Uh, for the Crossfield Summer Adventures Day Camp Society in seven, an amount of $7,000 to uh, for their operations. Um, this one was actually funds that were not spent in 2021 and the recommendation was made to uh, allow the day camp society to retain those funds and to return them if the day camp does not proceed for this year. And then um, the Crossroads Rotors Society also made uh, an application for operational funding in the amount of $2,000 um, to go toward their children's entertainment area for the Pete Knight Days Rodeo. Yes, so sir. thanks for us. Yeah. So recommendation has been made to uh, that council uh, approve the attached recommendations from the Crossfield Recreation Board for 2022 spring funding. I think that um, I think we're going to have to break it up a little bit. So it'll be sure. maybe a couple of motions. Okay. Did we change the revision to policy for the rec board? Like, I can't remember. Did we change it or has it always been a because we have two counselors that's in the rec board, two volunteers and a rocky person roughly. Did we change the policy before? Because I don't think council ever voted on this. I'm just, we we changed the policy it? just a few months ago. That's what I thought. Just, yeah. At this council table, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I didn't pay attention to what we thought. <laughs> to be honest, fully transparency. Because <laughs> my confusion is a little bit of if we have two people that are on the council already, I'm surprised it goes back to council to review after having two council members on there in a board of five. Yeah, and and you know there were some reasons for that um, on on the rec board, and I think we we went over that rec policy like two or three times that it came back to council, okay. and uh, there was a couple of things in there um, like even making. Um, decisions on land or facilities that were in there that we wanted a lot of those things to come back to council. So 
um, yes. and typically because it's money and and from our budget, it should come back to council. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 policy states that um, uh, the rec board will make recommendations mm -hmm. back to council for the final approval. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so let's do this. Let's make a motion on um, everything but Collie uh, Cut uh, and the day camp. If I can get a motion to accept those, if that's what council desires. I'll make um, that motion to accept those. Councillor Knight, all in favor? Aye. Excellent. And then I think Council Knight, um, you're kind of at the top of the list, so we're going to kick you out for a minute. Perfect. And then I guess if we can, um, if everybody's in agreement, if we can get a motion on um, the baseball funding. I'll make the motion to for the minor <laughs> for the Crossfield minor <clears throat> funding. Okay, funding. thank you. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Um, if you want to switch with Mike, please, and let him send him back in. It's true, yeah. Okay, now we just have the two rodeo um, society funds. If we're all good, if somebody would like to make a motion on the rodeo. I'll make the motion to accept the Crossfield Rodeo Society funding. Okay, all in favor? Anybody opposed? I would be opposed, Mayor Harris. Okay, thank you. I, just as a discussion topic. Can we finish the motion or sorry, is this part of the motion? Sorry, I thought, I thought it was <laughs> this part. Show through. I was just going to say, if we start looking at this, maybe we should be looking at the rodeo group for having multi-year leases as well. Um, we are... <laughs> Okay, just, just on that note, the leasing is being, we've sent staff back. We've given them a year to look at all leases, not just the rodeo lease. And so now we're just waiting for staff to come back with that proposal and options for council. 1,000, yeah. I'm just, I think if we're going to start, let's just give them multi-year leases if they're going to start spending money and upgrades and all the rest, which I think are awesome. Well, it's typically been a multi-year lease. That, that's so, yeah. all my comment was. Okay. Because I think it's great that they're, Beautifying the place and making it more functional and making it more usable. Okay. Anyway, that motion was carried. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Moving on to item 7.2 Railway Street Update, Director of Operations, Merrill Jarvis. Thank you, Mayor Harris. Good evening, Council. Uh, so I brought some information to Council this evening that has also been included with the public agenda. So I'll just do. Um, a quick overview on, on some of it, but I will go into more detail in other areas. So as we know, administration and council toured railway street revitalization area in the fall of 2021, and items were brought to administration's attention that required further investigation. Um, some of those things included the um, south entry feature sign, decorative lighting, business directory sign size, um, plan to removal uh, on the uh, corners, cor street corners, sorry, um, the decorative fence by the shell, um, and there's many more items. A few additional items were noted by administration in the operations department, which included snow removal, which we have had initial meetings with affected um, business owners and monitoring will continue. Uh, a few other things included exposed lamp standard concrete bases, decorative sidewalk blocks, bike racks, and handicapped parking <coughs> spots. So I'll go into the deficiency summary action sheet that I've provided with council. So as you may remember, we had a planning meeting uh, with uh, members of council and administration in February, and we did bring forth some options uh, for moving forward to 
um, address the deficiencies that were identified. So I'm just going to go through that list. So the south entry feature sign, uh, we did talk about moving it, but the costs uh, associated with moving it are quite high. They were um, proposed to be $30,284. So it was decided that the sign would remain where it is currently located. So there's no cost. With the decorative lighting, with the north entry sign lighting, uh, we've noticed it's brighter. Um, it was asked if the lighting could be adjusted so that it shines from the top rather than from the ground up. This is currently being looked into. Um, and it has been recommended by Stantec that we wait until the closeout of the contract um, where there's no changes to the design other than what needs to happen to get things working and that we make updates after the contract is complete so that changes do not risk impacting the existing issues and because we don't want to impact the current warranty that there is on the decorative lighting. Um, but again, I'm waiting for more information from Stantec, the design engineer, so I will provide more information on this as it becomes available to me. I have a question on that one. Um, I'm curious as why Stantec may have done like help with the design of that, but really who's going to fix that is not Stantec. It's going to be uh, optics illumination. Why aren't we dealing directly with them? Because currently we have a hold back on this project. So PE was the construction manager for the installation, and they are currently working with optics directly to figure out why we're having so many problems with the brightness and it actually operating. And, and is that why Stantec wants us to hold off on any other concerns? Because they want this hold back to be released? Because there's warranty with the lighting. So before we start making any changes, they want to make sure that the lighting is actually operational before we start making changes. And then after, um, say, the lighting system is operating and working, then and uh, PE and Stantec get right. their money, then it becomes just our responsibility solely. Correct. And then we would go directly to the supplier, which would be optics. Right. But do you feel that some of the issues are, it's kind of like, I'm just kind of confused because it, it's not um, the town we, really, it was Stantec's design um, that have put us in some of these prob, uh, problems. And so what's their responsibility? And that's a discussion that is taking place between PE and Stantec as we speak. So until I have further information, it's it's difficult for me to really say what the plan is moving forward because it's kind of a back and forth between the two right now. Okay, well, I guess uh, my concern is I don't want it to start land solely on the town slap. It won't. I won't allow that to happen. Oh, I want that in writing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so do I. Okay, thanks. Mark. So just know that with the decorative uh, lighting, we are weren't we are still working on it. Um, we're working with both PE, who is working with optics, and we're in discussions with Stantec. Okay. Okay. Uh, the addition of street sign business direct uh, street side side street business directory. So JC Graphics uh, will be meeting with. Uh, Scott of PE, so Scott was our construction manager, to look at installation. Administration can forward the information to the Chamber of Commerce for those businesses wishing to add their name to the sign posts. Um, so there's no costs associated with it as it will be town, it will be user pay. So the action is that administration will meet with the Chamber to discuss the opportunity to add the business names. Anyone who has interest can express their interest through the town or through the chamber. Additional follow-up will be provided to the chamber to share with railway street businesses relating to purchasing a sign and installation. And Scott from PE will be meeting with JC Graphics hopefully this month. That will be scheduled. Uh, the decorative fence by the shell. So the appearance of two fences is odd. There was a ball fence that was um, there for the small uh, ball diamond, plus the decorative fence. So it was a recommendation that operations remove the chain link fence adjacent to the ball field. 
And I just wanted to report that this has been done. I don't know if anybody has noticed, but we have removed the fence. So there's no cost. It has been completed as the labor was in house. Uh, there was a lifted area in front of the old grocery store at the art and one at the arches. So options were discussed, including installing bollards, a railing, or high visibility paint. All would be uh, additional cost to the town. So we have had discussions with the property owners and operations, and it was recommended to spray high visible reflective paint at these locations. And it would be done as soon as the temperatures are more agreeable and there would be no cost to the landowners and or to the town that labor would be and material would be in house. I should tell you too that I've spoken with both affected landowners, the old grocery store, she's on board. Um, so that's gonna take place. I have uh, provided notification to the Arches board. They are gonna take that information back to their board for discussion, but uh, they are happy that we've proposed a solution. Uh, grates in the flower bed, beds. So no further slipping complaints have been received other than the one town employee event. Um, so although we're looking for direction from council, we would recommend that we leave it as is uh, because there's quite a bit of cost associated with changing it, but we would continue to monitor. The bump out reflectors, so those sticks that were put out for uh, snow removal, they were, I think they were inserted in August. Uh, many of them went missing and there was expo exposed bolts for tripping and that caused a tripping hazard. So they have all been removed, they won't be replaced and the holes uh, have been filled with silicone to avoid damage to the con concrete. So that has been completed. Another deficiency noted was the memorial benches between the fences across from the shell. Um, we've advised that operations department will be turning them around. This likely will be done this week. And again, note there would be no cost to the town labor and material are in-house. Uh, then we've also identified there are 10 benches on railway street that are turned facing the street. Uh, so through discussions with council, it was uh, decided that it would be desired to remove those benches, use them in other areas of the town, and then replace them with backless benches with armrests. So um, there are no benches that would match the same furniture that provide armrests. So the backless benches would be um, $1,625 each. So if we go forward with that, the cost for five benches this year without armrests would be $8,425. However, I have sent an email to Maglin, which is the supplier for the bench or the street furniture to cost out benches similar to this model, but with armrests and I'm waiting for that dollar value. So I would be looking for council direction if they wanted me to proceed in that direction or if we were okay to install backless benches. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll give you an answer on that, but I think there might be a question on yeah. the benches. Yes, through the chair. So we had asked for you to collaborate with 4-H to see about them doing the project on the bench. How did that pan out? We have not approached 4-H um, on that matter as of yet because because I wanted to, and I can bring it up now, I wanted to bring up a matter of warranty, which for some reason it was never asked of us and we never provided you with the information. So what I can tell you is the town is in the process of executing the seasonal substantial completion certificate for the downtown revitalization. The site inspection was completed in July of last year and is the date for the substantial completion certificate initiating the warranty period. So it would be two years for civil work and one year for landscaping maintenance. Stantec has advised that self-performed work to change the constructed project may risk compromising the warranty period on surrounding work and recommend to defer changes that require self-performed work. So for instance, removing and replacing benches, that this work be completed after the warranty period. Uh, with the work that is being proposed, being removal of the plants and mulch and replacing with sod, which I will provide further information um, within this deficiency, deficiency action chart, 
Uh, it is thought that there is a greater risk to leave the plants where they are, um, waiting for the one-year landscaping warranty period to expire, for risk of further damage than leaving them until late July. Um, for the removal of the bike racks and replacement of the benches pose small risk to concrete cracking as operations will be filling the bike rack holes with silicone and the new benches will be put back in the same place with any cracking or holes being filled with silicone. So to touch on the 4-H collaboration, I almost would prefer that we don't, uh, just so that we can minimize any, um, I'm not saying anybody would damage our sidewalks or crack anything, but I feel like if we keep the labor, or it's my recommendation that we keep the labor in-house so that there's no risk to a third party causing any damage to town infrastructure. Through the chair, it was to my understanding that operations would work with the 4-H and install the benches. Yes, so it, so would that keep sorry, Mero, but would that keep down on minimal damage? Which really, there's no different putting the 4-H benches in versus putting new benches in. So there was a re previous recommendation for 4-H ben benches, but that was not for within the downtown area. That was in. Um, later identified park spaces. So those benches being constructed by 4-H were not for the downtown. Uh, just to clarify, when we went, those are separate benches. Mm -hmm. uh, they came as a separate matter. When we sat down and talked about the downtown plan, and it's right in your notes here, uh, to work with 4-H to install new yes. backless benches with armrests. I think that's what Councillor Kernelson is uh, referring to. Right. And that... Um, you know, our administration, public works or parks would work with them to do the installation and supervision of those. Right. So for the downtown project, for the removal and replacement, although we said that we would partner with 4-H and that, that is still an option, we haven't approached 4-H yet because of this warranty matter that has come to light with the civil work having a two-year warranty. And if we're to replace five benches this year, and five benches next year, that civil warranty is still in place. So if there was, go ahead. No, you can finish. So the thought was, is if we include 4-H and if there was any damage to the sidewalks, any cracking, or if there were any holes or damage, that, that the liability would fall to the town rather than a third party and involving uh, a community service group. When is the warranty over? So if it starts in July and the civil work is two years, it would be 2023, July 2023. So um, would administration prefer just to leave the benches as is for now? And then in 2023, address the issue? We can certainly do that. If, if council um, directs administration to do so, we're happy to do that. It, do you think that would be our best option or what option do you like? What do you think is best? I think because we have identified that it's not desirable to have benches facing the building, that if we were to do five this year, we could do it um, on an operations level and then perhaps in 2023 involve the 4-H for the five remaining. And then my final question on this, uh, on the benches would be, um, do we have any money in this current budget to do that? Or would you uh, switch things around in your operating budget to accommodate this? The cost for the benches would come out of the remaining budget for the downtown project. Okay. Any other questions for Meryl on the bench topic? All right, moving on. Okay, um, read some flower bump benches. So the ramps at the sidewalks, not directed to the crosswalk. So the design of the wheelchair ramps, we have been advised by Stantec that the city of Calgary standard specs for mobility uh, met and exceeded the requirements. So currently we will leave as is, but we will continue to continue to monitor. Another item was not enough access to businesses after parking to get through the flower beds. So currently 
Uh, the design allows for retrofitting. So the grates, planting beds, concrete sidewalks and pavers can all be interchanged. So costs have been provided, but could be reduced. Direction of council required. Estimated cost for plants, mulch removal and sod replacement is roughly 30,000 if contracted out. However, through discussions at our planning meeting, we discussed um, doing the work in-house. So we can certainly do that. We can coordinate with the parks department and summer staff for both parks and um, operations. The plant beds will be removed in areas adjacent to parking stalls on the west side of Railway Street. Part the plan is, is that parks will remove the plantings, the perennials, uh, public works will remove the mulch, and these plants and mulch will likely be repurposed to the cemetery, and operations will lay the sod. It's anticipated that the timeline will be summer 2022. Um, there's no cost for removal and replanting of the uh, perennials or mulch, and the approximate cost for a, pro uh, for a thousand um, square meters of Kentucky bluegrass sod is estimated between $5 and $5.25 per square meter. So the maximum cost being $52.50, $5,250. And what I can tell you is tomorrow, or sorry, Thursday, um, the operations foreman, um, Russ and I and Kimber will be walking the downtown because we want to talk about sequencing where we're starting and what it's gonna look like. So we can make sure that uh, we get the work done in a timely manner. That sounds great. You know, one thing that, I don't know, I think I might've asked it before, but there's a couple of um, the corners there that have that deep pit where it kind of drains in there. Um, and it just kind of goes like this, instead of being more of a flat surface. There, what's the reason behind that? And can that be changed? Are you talking within the bulb areas? Um, yeah, it's a it's a chipped area, and I think there's only two locations that do that. I don't know if it has something to do with drainage or something like that. But does it have to be sloped so deeply? I or can, can look we in, even that out a little bit. I can. That's a takeaway for me. I can look into that. Yeah, I just was curious about that. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so then there was also a concern on the longevity of the flowers being walked on. So I feel like we've addressed that in um, removing the flowers and mulch and replacing with sod. There was a light post near a rampway that was um, noted to be uh, positioned in such a way that it may impede. Um, uh, what am I looking for? <clears throat> just the flow of um, pedestrian traffic. So we followed up with Fortis. The placement of the lighting has been installed so that it meets illumination requirements. Cost, costs associated to relocate will require consideration for underground cabling, illumination levels, ground disturbance costs to do the work. And of course, those costs would be borne by the town. So uh, I think it was agreed that we leave the light standard as where it is and that we will monitor access at this location and look at ramp widening modifications for the future. Moving on to the administration add-ons, a few of the deficiencies that we've noticed. So the exposed lamp uh, standard concrete bases. So Fortis is aware of the issue. Custom covers are to be made at no cost to the town. Once fabrication is complete, they will be presented to administration. And we're looking uh, for this to be completed in the spring and there's no cost to the town. The decorative sidewalk blocks uh, have been within the ball barriers proved to be slippery in cold conditions. So as we have agreed through the snow clearing uh, this winter in the downtown area, operations will cont continue to remove the snow and lay ice melt. And there it's just ongoing, continue to be monitored. There's no costs, it's labor material are in house. So as you know, the bike racks on the corners um, are in a strange position and they can cause tripping hazards. So what's going to happen is we are removing all of those bike racks and we hope to repurpose them in a future, uh, at a future time in a different area of Crossfield. 
and those uh, holes will be filled with silicone. In the meantime, we have um, spoken with uh, a local company, Arctic Steel, has quoted the town for the cost of a bike rack. However, um, that, sorry, I should also mention that it'll be located at the post office, which we have spoken to the post office and they support this, that a bike rack be placed there and it would be at no cost to the town at this time. Arcton Steel is providing one free to us. Uh, and then the second last one is the handicap parking stalls. We've identified that they're not exactly located in the most ideal locations where access is provided from or onto the sidewalk. So administration and operations will be um, looking to relocate uh, the handicapped parking stalls in conjunction with the sidewalk access. And again, this would be done in line with summer uh, line painting and there's no cost, it's all in-house. And lastly, the electrical boxes. Um, it was noted that they're unsightly and create a tripping hazard. Uh, I should note that the electrical boxes are 120 amp. It was asked if they could be repositioned or replaced uh, so that they are flush with the ground. And um, we have requested Stantec to provide a quote for this work. Costing will be provided for council's consider consideration once received. The design and the current electrical, electrical conduit alignment will not allow for these boxes to be placed underground as the plugs are on the front of the box. So again, um, costing will be provided at a uh, future council meeting for council's consideration. And then lastly, I've provided the remaining downtown budget. So currently the remaining budget is $237, or sorry, $237,677. If we were to take five benches out of that at a cost of $84.25 and um, the costing for sod, uh, we're looking at a remaining budget of approximately $223,992 remaining. So the options before council are one, that council approve the action items and costing as outlined within the attached summary chart. Two, that council not approve the action items and costs as outlined within the attached summary chart until further review takes place. Or three, that council not approve the action items and costs as outlined within the attached summary chart and that the council deficiencies noted remain status quo. Okay, any questions for Merrill? To the chair. Councilor well, Lambert. What is the amount of our holdback and, and does that not have to come out of this downtown budget, the remaining budget? So the remaining holdback um, for the downtown project would be left for the electrical lighting. Everything else has been paid. So the estimated amount, uh, I believe, is it, we're holding back 20%. And Lori, you may want to confirm, I believe uh, it was 400, 425,000. So 20% of that is held back. And the amounts in the holdback account are not, we paid the project at cost, all gross. So the holdback account is something totally different. So it will not change the cost in the account. It's just the holdback account. Did that answer your question? So there's so there about 80,000, a little over 80,000 in, in holdbacks, which will come out of this downtown budget. No, no, no. Okay. It's That's separate. fine. Yep. That's correct. I just didn't want us to use up all that money and not have enough money for the holdback. Right. <laughs> Any other questions? So I just have um, for the motion, um, would we want to accept your whole chart? Or for those that are to be determined, should we leave those off of there for now and accept the rest of the chart? It, could that be like our option four? Absolutely. Because I don't really want to accept something that I don't know cost on or what that action actually is. Mm -hmm. So if we can take all the to be determines off of the chart, <laughs> like the illumination, uh, the Stantec remaining budget and the uh, unpaid items, 
Would that be okay? Absolutely, and including the electrical boxes. And the electrical boxes, yeah. yeah. So the Stantec remaining budget to be determined, the electrical boxes and the illumination were the three? Absolutely. Okay. Any further discussion? No, I, I do have, I, I agree with you, Mayor Harris, on, on taking off those to be determined costs um, off the chart for sure and, and uh, make the motion. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. Um, if there's no further, oh, sorry, Meryl, go, go ahead. No, no problem. I just wanted clarity on the benches. Did you want Public Works to proceed with the removal and replacement with five backless? backless benches without armrests this year? Okay, we'll do, um, we'll do two motions. So let's do the chart first, and then we'll do a bench motion for you. How does that sound? Perfect. Okay, so on the chart, um, aside from the benches, uh, Stantec remaining budget to be determined, uh, the illumination and the electrical boxes, does somebody want to make a motion to um, accept the chart as presented minus those four items? I'll make the motion to accept it, the chart, the chart as, as presented with exception of the to be determined items. Will that work? With, or, and the benches. And the benches. Pardon me. Is that okay, Lindsay? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, now on the benches, um, administration wants um, direction on the benches on whether we want to just leave them as they are, or if we want to defer it until after, or the last option would be to uh, move forward, purchase the backless, the five backless benches for the 8,000 and some change. Any discussion around that? Or would somebody like to make a motion? I to the chair. Councilor Knight. In terms of discussion, are we trying to discuss, just so I understand this in my way, just we are reviewing if that's the best Way of resolving this issue, or spend the money, or is it the amount? Is it the amount that we're talking about discussing, or is it the total cost of the project? Which ones, kind of, what everyone's thoughts are towards this? Because I think replacing them for that money is almost a lot. But I are we thinking about replacing less, or none of them, or what's everyone else's thoughts on this? So I think when we um, discussed this, there was a couple of things. Um, we can use those other benches in other areas. Uh, of town in different parks or at the cemetery or fish wherever ponds. at the fish ponds. Those Thank really you. Nice uh, so um, there's that. Just one second. And uh, uh, secondly, I think that uh, doing the five was determined so that we can use that as a pilot to see if that worked out before changing the other ones out. Um, because there's more than five benches Because I think downtown. we're only talking about replacing at this point the benches that are really uncomfortable yeah. or like look right in at people eating right we're talking about those ones we're now. talking about the 10 benches that are orientated facing buildings yeah, or but yeah. the ones we're replacing are the ones that are t really uncomfortable right which are which i understood would be determined by administration and operations right yeah. right ceo keenan <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Harris. Good evening, Council. Um, as Council's aware, we're almost halfway through the warranty period, which is up in July of 2022. I really think it would be prudent on the town's behalf to wait the extra year until the warranty is concluded and then make the move to move the benches only because of some of the ongoing issues we've had with the company that has been doing all of the work for us. Question. I was actually going to say the same thing. Sorry, through the chair. Um, what I was also thinking too is if we did wait a little bit longer, maybe the cost will come back down again because everything has skyrocketed due to the economy and everything that's going on. 
Yeah, and uh, I was leaning that towards that way as well. Mm -hmm. Would anybody, any further discussion? Justin do you, or Deputy Mayor, do you have any comments? No, I do. I, I do agree with uh, with Sue on the point of, of the warranty. You know, any chance that, that we could void our warranty, um, we should really look, uh, uh, have a hard look on, on whatever we do that may void that warranty. So I do agree with Sue on her points. Excellent. Would somebody like to make a motion? Okay. So I'll make the motion that at this time, we are not going to purchase the benches. We are going to wait until the warranty expires and then look into it again. All in favor? Uh, aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Meryl. You're welcome. All right. Items 8.1. HR policies. CEO Keenan. Thank you, Mayor Harris, and good evening, Council. Um, as Council's aware, um, I've been working on this uh, for a while. Tonight, I have before you 14 policies. I will advise I've got two more that are in production. They're not quite ready yet, so they'll be coming back to you at a later date. One is on vacation, and the other has to do with social media. In reviewing our current personnel policy booklet and considering the regular changes made to Alberta employment standards and other applicable legislation, it is necessary to provide more substantive and individualized policies applicable to all staff that are both pres prescriptive and detailed so there are no misunderstandings regarding interpretation moving forward. In addition, it would be my intent later this spring to include these policies in a revised employee handbook which would be modified as required and or as legislation changes and to have a full staff meeting for review and questions as soon as possible. The re recommendation before council tonight is that council receives as information the following attached HR policies number one through number 14, which are applicable to all employees of the town of Crossfield effective April 5th, 2022 and to repeal personnel policy 2019-01 effective immediately. Okay, any questions for Sue? Uh, I actually had one through the chair. It, I can't seem to get to the page yet, but it was on the drug and alcohol policy. Um, uh, weed is legal now, but um, it's kind of different than alcohol because it's not immediately, the body doesn't break it down as fast. So my question was kind of like, hey, like it can, THC can stay in the system for up to like 30 days or something. So I, and I know you had a zero tolerance, which is good. I was just wondering, uh, is there anything, what are you going to do in that way? Because you won't be feeling the effects of that at work if you have it like on a Friday night, but it'll be in your system if you do a drug test. So I was just curious what you had in place for that, like to be fair to the user. And that's a really fair question. And that's why drug testing is so important. Right. Um, I, I think that the rule of thumb has been and continues to be that if there is any um, indication by a supervisor at a work site that somebody's impaired, whether it's drugs or alcohol, a testing will immediately occur. That employee will be tested. And if there's something found in their system, then there will be consequences for that. So that whole, and I know it's subjective, but this is the law right now. Right. Um, that whole idea of um, impairment in the workplace and any kind of safety issues that could be cause for additional staff are a paramount concern and should be to administration and council, and we will deal with them um, as we go. Right, so sort of a case-by-case -case basis. Correct. And if it's suspect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, that's it. So just to further that, I think that it's never just one thing um, in these policies. It's always um, all of the evidence that Correct. is taken into consideration. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? 
Yep. Feedback to the chair. That's Good right. work, Sue. Yeah. Was, Thank you. <laughs> right. Yeah. And a lot of work. Yes. And a okay. lot of work. If I could just add one other thing, um, if I didn't have Lindsay to help me with all the formatting and do all the formatting, I wouldn't be as far ahead as I am right now. So a special shout out to her. Oh, yeah, we know who does all the work around. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the quiet ones. Okay, so you, you really want uh, two motions. One, the first motion is to retract 2019 uh, dash zero one policy. Correct. Okay, so let's do that one first. And so just for maybe some of the counselors that may not know, we're retracting it to get it off the books so that it's not an existing competing <coughs> policy with the new one. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who would like to make the motion to retract 2019 dash zero one policy? I'll make the motion. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, that's okay. He's already said it. So we're, we're on a bit of a time delay here. So yeah, no, you go ahead. Uh, we'll give that one to you. There's another one coming up that uh, Councillor Knight can do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can uh, I'll make the motion to retract tw uh, policy 2019-01. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Motion carried. Okay, and now you want um, a motion to accept the rest of the policies for information. HR policies one through 14 to accept as information via motion, please. One through 14, okay. And who would like to make that motion, Councillor Knight? I'll make the motion the council receives the information the following HR policies one through 14 and to be effective April 5th. I'm oh, sorry, as information. For information, yeah. Awesome, all in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Thanks administration, all of you for your hard work. Okay, bylaw, tax arrears bylaw 2022-02. Mayor Harris. That's coming to me. That's you? Yes. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Good evening, Council. Um, as Council is aware, um, administration has been reviewing our bylaws and policies, and upon review of the current uh, tax penalty bylaw, uh, administration noticed that the bylaw is outdated and is no longer in compliance compliance with the Municipal Government Act. Uh, we completed research with surrounding and popula population like municipalities and consulted with legal counsel in an effort to better align our tax penalty bylaw with the Municipal Government Act. Um, so currently the town of Crossfield's uh, penalty bylaw is dated uh, 92-01 and has three penalty levels as follows. 10% penalty applied to all unpaid current tax says on July 31st, another 7% 7 penalty added to all unpaid current taxes on October 31st, and then an 18% penalty applied to any and all unpaid taxes on January 1st. Uh, we consulted with the town of Carstairs, town of Didsbury, town of Sundry, and the town of Olds, and uh, they all range between two to three different penalty levels. Um, and upon, again, upon review with our legal counsel, uh, we're recommending moving forward uh, from three penalty levels to two, um, going with on August 1st, a 9% penalty uh, be applied on any outstanding amount on the current taxes. And then on January 1st of each year, um, a 10% penalty on any and all tax arrears um, on January 1st. Um, so administration is recommending that council give first reading to bylaw 20. 2022-02, the tax penalty bylaw, and that a public hearing be held on April 19th at 7 p.m. and that a notice be placed on the town's website and social media platforms advising of the public hearing. Excellent. Questions for Lindsay? No questions for Lindsay? We need to <laughs> wow. Good job, Lindsay. Thank you. Look at that. That doesn't happen often, does it? I don't have a question, but I just have a comment when it comes to the motion, something mm -hmm. in addition to the motion. Well, then how about you make the motion and propose your addition? Hi, everybody. Okay. <laughs> I make the motion that bylaw 2022-02 tax penalty bylaw be given first reading and that a public hearing be held on April 19th at 7 p.m. 
that a notice be placed on the town's website, in our newsletter, and on social media platforms advertising the public hearing. Just on the note that that the newsletter doesn't go out till the end of April. So the newsletter is the 19th Maybe or the early? public hearing. Could we send out the newsletter early so it's included? I'm not, no. I don't know. No. I'm not sure that the well, newsletter like is going to make it yet. much of a difference. If we do social media and in the paper, I think yeah. we'll be covered. And the, and the website, okay. yeah. Yeah, and the website, yeah. I think we'll be covered. A lot of our seniors are reading the newsletter versus being on Facebook. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I don't know. And I can always do up a, um, a notice and I can uh, deliver it, drop it off, or uh, okay. hang a poster up at Carmen's or we'll something just take like that. that. Out of the motion I just made that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you want to retract that piece and go with the, rid or the original motion? Okay. To the newsletter. Okay. okay. Thank you, Lindy. <laughs> All in okay. favor? Uh, Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. Item 10, Mayor and Council Business and Committee Reports. Uh, in addition to uh, what's currently on the agenda, I also attended a meeting with um, Minister McIver with uh, Deputy Mayor or sorry, yeah, with Deputy Mayor Gustafson and Sue Keenan. We talked a little bit about the, um, the new LMFF um, grant, a little bit about policing, and uh, it was an interesting meeting for sure. And just on the, that grant, uh, similar to MSI, uh, the minister is pushing back to uh, municipalities to make the decision on what that formula looks like. Um, Sue kindly drafted a letter for me to send to the mayor of St. Albert, who is also the chair of uh, Alberta municipalities. And uh, we did get a response back of which I'll send to all of you, but basically it said they're working on it. Uh, they've been working on it for some time and uh, they have a committee together. So they will be, uh, uh, have asked for any of our feedback that would uh, help them in the process. Uh, March 31st, um, I got to judge the uh, inaugural Trojans Got Talent Contest at W.G. Murdoch. There was some really good talent there, so I was pretty proud of the kids. Uh, March 28th, uh, I met with Lonnie McLeod, uh, Crossfield Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we just chatted about a few things and maybe some initiati initiatives that we can help the chamber out with and uh, move forward, not only as uh, administration, but as council. And we have some ideas which we'll bring back to you guys. Uh, March 15th, I attended my South Central Mayor's meeting. And on March 24th, um, just to check in, my check-in meeting with uh, CEO Keenan. Deputy Mayor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Harris. Um, you kind of stole my thunder there um, <laughs> with Ms. Minister McIver. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, attended the uh, meeting with uh, Mayor Harris and uh, and our CAO Sue Keenan with uh, Minister McIver on um, several issues and that was um, that was about it for me I wasn't quite as busy as you mayor thanks deputy mayor <laughs> councillor Brennan uh, on March 30th, I attended a collaborative dinner meeting with the town of Carstairs and the town of Didsbury, which was an amazing meeting. I don't think I would have changed a thing about how that went. And then on the 31st, a uh, budget meeting with administration. That's it. Councillor Cornelson. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, on March 28th, I attended the Crossfield Recreation Board meeting. March 30th, I attended a collaborative dinner meeting with the town of Carstairs, town of Disbury. On March 31st, I attended the budget meeting. And then this Saturday, I attended the farmer's market, as per usual. Cheryl had a full house. And this coming next, next Wednesday, I have a meeting with the Ag Society. Thank you. Councillor Knight. Uh, March 16th, my monthly uh, water commission meeting. 
Uh, March 28th, Water Commission meeting forecasting with uh, the admin staff here as well. Uh, March 31st, the budgeting meeting with administration. Uh, it'll be a busy month for the Water Commission. We're going to have our AGM on the 13th, and then we're having a strategic planning meeting on the 23rd as well. So it'll be a fun April month for the Water Commission. <laughs> Councillor Lambert. On March 30th, I also attended the um, collaborative meeting with the town of Carstairs and the town of Didsbury. And March 31st, the budget meeting with administration. And Councillor Bay. On March 30th, I attended the collaborative dinner meeting with Carstairs and Didsbury. Uh, March 31st, I attended the Budget planning meeting, planning meeting, and that's all. Excellent. And I have one more um, item of business, which is uh, you may notice some of us are wearing green today. Um, April 7th is Green Shirt Day. I would like to uh, make a motion that we make a proclamation in honor of Logan Boulay in support of Orrin donor awareness and registration across Canada and proclaim April 7th Green Shirt Day. I'll make that motion, but I- I just made the motion. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, if you want to vote on it, that would be okay. I'm already in support. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Administrative update, 11.1 CEO update. McEwen University Town of Crossfield Snow Removal Policy Project Report. Thank you, Mayor Harris. Um, I have a few things I'd like to touch on tonight. I like to try and keep these short, but there's a lot of information, so it's going to be a little longer than normal. As council was aware, um, Lindsay and I were working with um, Grant McEwen students um, with regard to policy development and a policy review. Uh, wanted to thank um, Jess, Jasper, Colin, Janessa, and Cameron who were working on the snow removal policy, the current most current one for the town of Crossfield. They did an incredible job. Um, Lindsay and I were uh, via Zoom was it last Friday or the Friday before? I've lost track of weeks. Um, I think it was last Friday. Um, they made a presentation to their class as well as several profs uh, because their mark was um, contingent. A big part of their mark was contingent on how they did. Uh, we were, and Lindsay can jump in here anytime, very impressed with the presentation that they made, the questions they asked of us administratively, um, the information that uh, we were able to provide back from them and some of the recommendations that they came up with then after they had compared us to like-sized municipalities around the province of Alberta, but also went as far down as the U.S. to do some comparables with regard to snow removal. Some of the recommendations, and I've included the entire report because when you do have some time, I think you'll find it quite fascinating. Um, some of the recommendations with regard to, and I will give a big shout out to the town of Crossfield because we use gravel on our roads for snow removal or snow, our snow policy, sorry, not snow removal, where most other municipalities use sand and gravel. And these young people were really cognizant of the environmental impact of sand and salt. And so talked quite a bit about that. Um, there can, and I just want to take a few minutes to read the conclusion that's in the report. Praise for Crossfield's policy. In our sample size, they are the most specific, most extensive, meet all of our qualifications, only ones cutting salt entirely, most frequent policy reviews, and most recent policy update. Policy evolves over time to become more precise as needed. Policies are relatively similar in Canada, or at least in the prairies, different in the states, in the states, not just geographical graphical influences, but culturally and politically motivated as well. Too much salt is bad. Suggestions for Crossfield, maybe try beet juice. And there was other kinds of recommendations they came up with as well. 
Um, and, and honestly, I think we laughed a little bit at first, but then thought there's some real merits in looking at some of these options. So there will be a discussion with the operations and Marie at a later date, but um, I think it was just worth noting that they did a fabulous job and uh, they were very complimentary to the town of Crossfield. So I wanted to share that. So I, I don't have any questions about that, but um, I'm a big fan of um, giving these students an opportunity to do some real life work. I'm super happy that we partnered with them on this. And uh, I think it is a mutually beneficial project when things like this happened. And last of all, I think the um, chat with the city of Airdrie on the beet juice thing. I think they tried it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you for that tip. Um, just with respect to a few other items uh, in my report, wanted to touch on a couple of things tonight. Uh, the fleet review and planning is well underway for budget 2023. Uh, working with the department heads uh, with respect to the review and subsequent re report for council consideration. Um, the discussions that we've been having are realistic, efficient, and they will be affordable. I'm looking forward to presenting that report to council. It'll probably be in July so that it's a bit separate from capital and operational budgets. It really is a standalone a lot of our budget does go into our fleet and our and our equipment. And so we want to pay some particular attention to that. So that's coming. And uh, the departments have been very great uh, with respect to input and um, some design initiatives that they've taken. So I think you'll be impressed with that report when you get it. I'm not going to touch on Minister McIver. I think Council's already done that. I do want to touch a little bit, though, on the tri-municipal meeting that Crossfield had with Carstairs and Didsbury and want to thank Carstairs for hosting. It was an incredible evening. It was held on Wednesday, March 30th with all um, three councils and all of the council members, I believe one or two were missing and their respective CAOs from the three jurisdictions. The issues that we discussed that night included, but weren't limited to policing, a police, uh, provincial police force versus policing, a police, uh, provincial police force versus uh, maintaining RCMP, emergency um, services and the impacts of medical calls on fire services, MSI or LGFF funding, um, CP Rail, which was a big one, and uh, economic development and what we could do collaboratively together moving forward. Some excellent discussion ensued and a commitment was made to meet on a more regular basis. So the three councils have agreed to do that. The town of Crossfield will be hosting the next meeting of the three municipalities. And we'll probably look to have that in September. Um, there was some direction provided by the three councils to come up with some resolutions for AUMA, or not AUMA, uh, AM, Alberta Municipalities. So it would probably behoove us to have a meeting before we go up to the conference uh, because uh, we'll need to finalize those resolutions and make sure it's what count the three councils wanted us to um, present. Um, next on the list is uh, filming. Wanted to bring you up to speed on that, and you'll hear a lot about this in the next little while. So uh, we did a handout. We got it this morning with regard to the tentative, the more tentative uh, filming schedule that is coming up. Um, I did want to let you know that filming is going to start on April 18th. Uh, Lindsay and I'll be working on a release in the next couple of days. That will indicate the scheduling, the locations of all the shoots that are happening in town. Um, and then of course, um, all operations and administration will be very involved in making sure it's a seamless process for the production and things go smoothly. That being said, there will be minimum tra traffic disruption. Uh, we will be confirming partial or full street closures, dates and times prior to the end of this week recognizing that with every film production changes happen and we'll get those changes up and out on social media as quickly as we can with our primary objective to uh, reduce any um, inconvenience for any of our residents or businesses. Uh, schedule in areas in town will be uh, posted, like I said, to all social media sites and that will go up April 8th and updated as any changes occur. 
Uh, the last note I'll make on the filming, and we're, we're very excited if you've been down through downtown or over to the school, uh, and there are a couple of residents in Crossfield as well. Um, they're, they're just ready to go. So filming starts on the 18th, which is Monday. Um, there was an issue, uh, a resident raised a concern about the dumpster that's been parked uh, by the um, old grocery store. I will advise council that that was part of the permitting process. I gave approval for that on the short term basis. That dumpster will be relocated tomorrow and it won't be back until such time as they're ready to tear down uh, once fil filming is concluded. So I realized that it posed a bit of a safety concern. I have had conversations with Trevor and the RCMP prior to the permit being issued. It was flagged properly. People knew that it was gonna be there. Um, I know that was a bit of an inconvenience and I recognize that, but there needs to be a balance and a bit of a give and take when filming comes to town. So just that update as presented with respect to that. Um, strategic planning, as council is aware, we've got two upcoming public engagement sessions, Wednesday, April the 20th and Wednesday, May the 4th at 7 p.m. Uh, the mayor and I will be facilitating that discussion. My hope is that some of the councillors will be there as well as some of the senior administrative staff. Um, the mayor and I'll be talking about that a little more as we get closer to that time. Um, and I think everything else you can read at your own uh, reading pleasure. So thank you. Excellent. Any questions for Sue? I want more information on the uh, beet juice ice removal because I read their report. Did you did you guys actually read it? Yeah, it was actually neat. I'd like to see some experiments. It's called there. Google. Hmm? Google. <laughs> <laughs> For everything else, there's Google. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Excellent. If there's no further questions, no. then can I get a motion to accept? Uh, the CAO's report for information. I'll make that motion that we accept the CAO's report for information. All in favor? Uh, aye. Motion carried. All right, Merrill, Director of Operations, you're up. Thank you, Mayor Harris. So I've provided some monthly development building stats for council. So from January to March, we've issued 17 development permits six home occupations and 14 new home building uh, construction permits. The, down, sorry, the council downtown deficiency update I've provided under a separate cover. With the operations department, we have all equipment repairs are up to date and the department is on track for spring street cleaning, which is already starting to take place. Uh, the operations department has completed all of its necessary training for the year. And I've provided a list of uh, the various areas that uh, they've upgraded or renewed their certifications. With the wastewater capacity, uh, the request for a proposal for the lagoons sewage treatment upgrade, aeration addition for the 60-day cell was posted on March 9th on the Alberta Purchasing Connection and the town's website. It closed, the closing date was March 30th. Uh, the procurement schedule sees the design build contract award scheduled for April 20th. Uh, what I do know is two submissions were received by All North. I don't have too much information to share at this point, but I will be providing an update once it's available. Um, but the scope of the work and timeline anticipates installation for the aeration system, including the electrical supply and controls for August of this year. And again, we continue to work with All North, and they understand that the town would like to see the aeration system implemented sooner. Rather than, rather than later, and if the timelines can be shortened, we will work to do so. And we've also provided a capital project update. So part of our capital projects were that the lagoon fence replacement was to take place. Um, through further investigation, we determined that repairs made uh, were more desirable than a replacement, and the project came in under budget. This has been completed. The Range Road 12 water looping uh, we're currently working with the developer and the town engineers to determine next steps and timing. Information will follow once we have more information to share. The Neptune water meter replacement program, 
So uh, we do have grant funding for this program to take place, but it's currently delayed due to supply chain issues. So it will be on hold for at least uh, the end of June. Sidewalk, side, sorry, sidewalk repairs, following sidewalk assessment, um, a plan for repairs and replacement will be developed. We are meeting with a representative from Safe Sidewalks on Friday uh, so that we can uh, start this process. Patching and paving, so we will be evaluating um, our streets and roads and we will um, determine areas that need patching and paving and implement a plan for summer to do the work. And lastly, we are looking to remove the old water plant that's on Limit Avenue. And we're currently working to get three quotes. Two local businesses have expressed interest and we anticipate the information being submitted within the next week or two. Excellent, thanks, Meryl. Questions for Meryl? You have a question for Meryl? <laughs> <laughs> Not so much a question, and thank you, Mayor Harris. Um, just something that I think sometimes I find the staff are a bit modest. Um, in terms of operations and the training that's occurred, I want council to recognize that our operators are now certified for three years, and that's going to have an impact on our insurance premiums going down. So I, I really do want to, um, I know Meryl and, and uh, Marie have really been pushing for it and to have it done in March for the next three years is fantastic. I love that everyone has their training. It's sure going to help the town out, especially if you have any um, claims or accidents or anything like that. So, yep, great initiative. And thanks for getting that done, Meryl. No problem. Okay, can I get a motion? No, we're gonna accept them all at the same time. Okay. Yeah, so Director of Community and Protective Services, Russ Nash. Hello there. Um, so you have your report before you. Uh, I'm not gonna go through everything. I'll touch on some highlights as we go through and you can ask questions if I miss anything. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Needs Assessment has been started. We've had a couple meetings already with the consultants. They're collecting information, developing their engagement plans, the surveys and all of that stuff. Attached to this report is the work plan that has been um, proposed and approved uh, for your review. Uh, for some internal FCSS programming, Nicole has uh, undertaken a volunteer appreciation initiative where she's reaching out to the volunteer groups um, throughout Crossfield to uh, stop in and thank them for their time, give them some goodies. Um, so far she's had about 15 groups respond. I think she may have a couple more now since this report was completed. So she's hoping she's coordinating that in conjunction with National Volunteer Week, which is April 24th to 30th. Um, The roof access at the community center was installed on March 21st and 22nd. There were a couple deficiencies that I noted that I didn't like, so they're repairing that for me. Um, at the time of this report, we were awaiting final details to be confirmed before awarding the exterior facade at the uh, community center. Um, since then, that has been completed and we have awarded that project to a contractor. Um, and it should start uh, toward the end of this month, early May. So uh, that, that's a good thing. We're just gonna, uh, we're just trying to decide on colors. Um, we also submitted an application to the Active Transportation Fund through Infrastructure Canada to complete an active transportation plan. So for our pathways and trail systems, uh, which will assist us in planning future pathways and trails, as well as with future grant applications for pathway construction. For the fire department, call stats as of March 28th were 141 total calls. Typically, we're around 90 calls at this time of year. So we're, we're up a bit. Um, March was seatbelt awareness month, so that was a focus for our peace officer as well as, uh, so that includes seatbelts as well as um, car seats, and they held a car seat clinic on April 2nd at the fire hall. Um, 
on March or the week of March 14th, we uh, we had all of our fire alarms and fire extinguishers inspected throughout all of our facilities. Um, and the fire suppression system for the hall kitchen was also inspected. Those are kind of the highlights for the for the past month. Excellent. Good work, uh, Russ. Um, I love that you guys are getting that new software. I think it's going to be super helpful um, with the registration. So yeah, it's always nice when you can move on to more of an online format than dealing with paper. <laughs> And so far, Eris is very happy with how it's working. She's kind of got a couple smaller events coming up in April that she's taking registrations through that software. And so far, so far, so good. Excellent. And on volunteer week, excellent. I love uh, recognizing our volunteers. I think they're what uh, makes Crossfield run. And without them, we wouldn't have as much programming as we do. So just a shout out to the volunteers. Um, you kind of need to, you know, you can uh, do this or not do this, but it'd be really neat to capture like how many volunteer hours um, do we have in Crossfield across all of our groups. And I know that's a probably a bigger project than now, but maybe something to consider in the future. Yeah, and definitely in years to come here, we're, we're planning to do bigger and better things for volunteer appreciation. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Any questions for us? Or comments. Okay. Thanks, Russ. And Director of Finance, Lori. Good evening, Mayor Harrison Council. Um, in early March, we sent out um, an RFP for a new managed service provider as Calypso, our current provider that's offboarding. Um, so last day is April 17th. Um, we had 10 applications. Um, we narrowed it down to three of which they all came for an on-site visit. Um, we have awarded the contract to Reality Bites. They actually started this past Monday. Um, so this whole week we'll be doing onboarding work, gathering information from clits. So um, they walked around to all the sites on Monday um, to take a physical inventory of what was here and we're hoping for a go live date on April 11th. Um, the month of March was completing year end adjustments and finalizing of the operating budget. Um, the auditors are here on April 11th to the 13th. On April the 19th um, council night, I will be presenting the budget as well as the tax bylaw as well as a line of credit borrowing bylaw um, and giving the update for the first quarter of 2022. Excellent. Good news on the uh, Clitzo and new provider front. I'm, I'm very looking happy. forward to that and I'm hoping that uh, everything runs a little bit smoother for everyone. So I'm very happy for they, they identified a couple things the first day being here. So that was kind of nice. So well, thank you for working so hard on that. I appreciate it. CEO Keenan. Thank you, Mayor Harris. Um, I just wanted to um, recognize the amount of time and effort um, that Lori's put in on the IT um, services. But I also wanted to acknowledge publicly Councillor Knight's involvement and his technical expertise. Um, as administrators, we can't always come to the table with the knowledge about everything. And it was, he's been a godsend and he's been very helpful and he's made our lives a whole lot brighter with regard to moving this agenda item forward. So to both of them, a huge thank you and big relief from me as your CAO. Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Mike. I'll Thanks second that for, for Councillor yeah. Knight's expertise. It definitely helped me and my knowledge of technical IT kind of went up quite a bit, very well, quickly. He, he's not just a pretty face, eh? Wow. <laughs> Excellent. Any questions for Lori? No. No? Nope. All right. Acting Director of Administration, Lindsay Nash. Um, our administration front end ladies have been busy for the month of March. Um, Lori Ross has been training and supporting the development department with the issuance of development permits, home occupation permits, compliance, and uh, the building electrical plumbing gas permits. Um, 
So for the month of March, Lori uh, Ross has issued five develop development permits with three applications in various stages of the process with two approvals, including a clothing store and a manufacturing uh, prefab wall uh, business in the industrial area and six home occupation permits with three in the various stages of uh, process and three approvals, including a home office for marketing, um, an aesthetic business and a home-based instruction of firearm safety course. Um, our utility update, uh, Diane has been working and cross-training Laurie Ross on the bulk water system. And uh, Laurie is completing the monthly invoicing and Diane is working on collecting outstanding accounts for bulk water, including sending out letters and shutting off accounts until the arrears are, are cleared. Um, Diane has also been working hard on uh, tax arrears for the designated manufactured home parks. Um, uh, as of March 30th, there was uh, two of the five outstanding accounts have been collected and paid in full, and she has been working um, on the three remaining accounts. And I believe uh, yesterday or today she has um, been in contact with one of those people and they've come in and put some money down on one of their accounts. So we'll hopefully get that done and uh, caught up before taxes go out. Um, training, Diane and Lori have been working with uh, Marion on training and supporting her in the receptionist role. Uh, the utility department, uh, Diane and Lori Ross, will be taking a muni wear utility training course uh, next week. And um, I am looking at doing a cemetery module uh, training session for Diane, Lori Ross, and myself uh, in the muni wear. And uh, Courtney has been um, working on accounts payable and receivable, receivables. Um, she's been invoicing all the hall and arena users and getting those all in, working on journal entries for the from 2021 and uh, doing the bank reconciliation, or not bank reconciliation, reconciliation for credit cards from 2021 20, uh, from August to December. Uh, she has been working on um, payroll training with Munuware and uh, is preparing, pre preparing uh, recreation board financials for the auditors. Excellent. Thanks for the update, Lindsay. I know you already have a lot on your plate and I certainly appreciate you taking on new tasks. The other thing I appreciate is uh, all the training staff are doing. It's so important in smaller municipalities when we have to, you know, cross train and know like a whole bunch of different areas and not just the one specific area that um, you're dedicated to. So I appreciate all, all the staff and getting the training and whatnot. And definitely appreciate, appreciate uh, getting some of those tax arrears back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions for Lindsay? Okay, can I get a motion to accept all of the updates from our directors and senior admin? She's going like this. No, I thought I heard Justin. Well, oh, I'm here. I'm here, though, but I can make the motion to accept oh. uh, administration's updates as provided. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, all in favor? Motion carried. Okay, we have a council action sheet. And uh, we also have a letter from the town of Fox Creek uh, regarding increasing utility faxes. Um, <clears throat> If I can get a motion to accept both of those for information. I'll make the motion to receive and file the uh, correspondence. Thank you. All in favor? Motion carried. Aye. Okay, just a little update, some upcoming events and programs. Uh, April 9th, Easter extravaganza, um, 10 a.m till noon at the Crossfield Curling Club. Easter break activities, April 20th, Old Pool and Boston Pizza. April 21st, Flying Squirrel. April 22nd, Peter Rabbit 2, Movie at the Hall. And Friday, April 29th, Drive-In Movie Community Info Night. Six to nine at the Crossfield Rodeo Grounds. Gates open at six. And seniors trip, preliminary plans for a trip for the week of May 16th. And that is the conclusion of our meeting. If I can get a motion to adjourn. I'll make, make a motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. <laughs> I'm gonna to go to uh, Councillor Vang. Thank you.